Well, there is no, I mean, I don't see any problem with everyone being enlightened. It's a wonderful concept. However, um, the um, problem arises with distinguishing between intellectual apprehension or intellectual idea of what enlightenment is and the actual um, physiological, psychological and metaphysical transformation of individual on all levels and above all on a cellular level. These are two very different things, these are two very different realities. Yes, it is not very hard to grasp the essence, and many people are able to do that today, that we are consciousness. We live in the field of, um, of being, where everyone swims in that soup, where everyone is part of that eternal, uncreated, omniscient, om 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 omniscient, omnipresent um, reality. We're all part of that. And you don't need to actually strain to grasp that. It's enough to close your eyes and think of yourself as, you know, who am I? And you will remember that throughout the years of your life, ever since you were a child, you always had that idea that I am. The physiology, the body, the mind was evolving, developing. So you changed many she sheets, you've changed many skins, you've changed many clothes, you've changed many identities, but you've maintained always that sense of I am. That sense of I am have never left you. So obviously it is something, it is something that people are able to grasp and many teachers emphasize or even construct the whole teaching on that um, on, on those premises I mean the path of self-inquiry or self-inquiry uh, is, is as old as, as our world um, perhaps it came to the West and became established in the West in recent history uh, through the teachings of great masters in India, like uh, Raman Maharshi, or Sagrata Maharaj, um, and some others. You know, there are some great teachers today who practice uh, you know, and teach this method. Yet, my main problem with this whole notion lays in the fact that people get an idea that there is nothing, nothing to seek. There is nothing to look forward to. There is nothing to um, basically embrace other than what it is now. And that includes, that includes to remain in a status quo. That means that the most beautiful, the most refined idea that humanity has ever entertained, the idea of enlightenment, starts to get this very funny uh, of, you know what, there's nothing need to be done, you're already that, you know, just, just, you know, drop all the, you know, tries, you know, just like, drop all the efforts, it's already there. Fine as it is, it creates a certain concept in the head. And person then, if he is not truly ready to experience it on a physiological level, starts to go about um, entertaining this notion that I'm already God, or I'm already absolute, I'm nothing, what have you, you know, according to the path uh, or the tradition he or she follows, and that all results in, funny enough, it results in a strain, it results in the inner conflict, although I've understood that I'm already that, I'm always omnipresent, omniscient being, you know, I'm not the corporal reality, I'm not the temporal reality, I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, I'm not the senses. Yet, everything that is associated with that, what I just mentioned, is there. You know, you don't have another body, you only have this body now, and this very moment. 
So what do you do about it? This is why I personally prefer the path of gradual purification. I mean, it could be called anything, you know. This is a tantric path. It's the path of uh, Vedanta. It's the path of um, non-dual non -dual approach. However, in order to arrive to a true self-realization, you have to go through a painstaking process of gradual transformation of your own individuality, which is still a bound individuality. And in order to disbound it or unbound it, you have to have this process staged. So I see it in a very, very old-fashioned traditional way. But I understand it because I understand it that way because that was my own experience, that was my own path. And every teacher can only speak from his or her own level of awareness, from his or her level of understanding. So when some teachers say there's nothing to seek, there's nothing to, um, you know, just drop the idea of enlightenment, you know, I think it's all always said with tongue in cheek because you cannot really jump out of yourself. You know, you, you still have all the stuff that, you know, deposited there deep in the recesses of your mind and your psyche for thousands of incarnated lives. And it's not just going to leave you overnight because you suddenly had this intellectual understanding, intellectual apprehension. Um, but it's a very big thing. It's a very big theme and I prefer to uh, perhaps come back to it many times and look at it from different angles.